Howdy fellas, Caleb here. Wanted to talk a little bit about some Seraphon updates. Uh, we've seen a couple preview articles from GW on the new Battle Tome that's coming out. It's going to be pre-ordered on Saturday. So get ready, get your wallets ready. Uh, we'll see some more, we'll see, you know, Man Reads book here in a few days. But I wanted to talk about what do we know so far? What have they shown us in our updates? So we're going to go through those and maybe some hints at, at what's coming. And maybe some synergies that we can infer from that. But really, I, just, I just really want to talk about some Seraphim stuff. Okay. <laughs> um, so starting off, we have our beautiful terrain piece. It's uh, pretty cool so far. I mean, it looks all right. It's $60. So it'll, it'll, it'll run you a price there. But the most important thing is it's free to include in your list. It is garrisonable. So you can put, you can put up to 20 wounds in it per their article. So that's kind of cool. And if you do put a wizard in it, a Seraphim wizard or a Seraphim priest, you can control it. It'll do some mortals at range. And the further away um, the target is, the it's the, it causes a roll that's worse. So you pick a terrain feature. If it's within 18, you're going to be basically doing mortals on a two up. So that's pretty sweet. So if you can place this thing, we don't know the placement rules yet. But if you can place this thing kind of towards the middle of the board, then you can, you can potentially do a lot of mortal wounds there. If it's got to go in your territory, you probably won't be doing too much with it. Uh, turn one or two, but maybe later in the game it will come in handy. If it's uh, if you're shooting for something further than that, you know, uh, 19 to 35 inches, it'll be on a 4-up, which isn't bad. And if it's more than 36 inches, it'll be on a 6-up. So it's it's got decent range. Um and it's gonna—it's it's not gonna be too consequential, but it'll—it'll it'll plink off some mortals. It might help you finish off that one unit that you're trying to kill. I think the most important thing is that garrison—the fact that you can garrison units into it. And we'll see. Kind of—I'm sure they're gonna have to expand on the garrison rules because we don't really have a lot of garrisoning stuff. There's a couple terrain pieces that will let you garrison, but not a whole lot. So I'm kind of interested to see what they end up doing with this. If if uh, there's you know, gonna be some expansion on the garrison rules because. You could end up with some goofy stuff. So, like, if you garrison a slon in there, and then cast Balewind Vortex, which there's nothing that says you can't, all of a sudden you've got a slon in a garrisoned place on top of a Balewind, and put some skinks in there with him, and now he's minus one from Lookout Sir from the skinks, minus one from Cover, and why don't we give him a Griff Feather Charm? So he's another minus one. So now you got a slon that's minus three to hit. Not too bad. And uh, he'll be plus two to save. So the current slon would be at a two up save and minus three to hit in shooting. I think I can keep my slot alive there. And he'll be doing mortals from the terrain piece. So not too bad. Um, so I think there may be some expansion on those rules. We'll see. So far, it uh, looks like a pretty cool addition. Um, it's, it's, I like the way it looks. Um, I think it's got a pretty cool little piece on top, but it's flat though on top, which means it's ripe for conversion. You can put anything up on top of there. Uh, so go wild, make it look cool. Um, I'm sure we'll see some pretty sweet conversions coming from this thing. And, uh, oh, we did also learn that it's reversible. So <laughs> if you don't like the overgrown picture that we have here, then you can flip that thing around and it looks like a brand new shiny one. So if you're if you're looking to go for the um, different allegiance abilities, if you, if you want the Starborn allegiance, then you can make it look all nice and shiny. If you want the coalesce, you can you can give it the jungle jungle look. All right, so that's our terrain piece. Um, we've also seen some allegiance abilities. Here here's our allegiance abilities. Um, we don't know what they all are yet. So far, they kind of look. Uh, some of them are really basically just what we already have, just kind of split up and chopped up. So the first one, Contemplations of the Ancient Ones. At the end of your hero phase, one slon can replace their lore spell with another one. That's, you know, we've basically already got that. So uh, I'm glad to see that continue because it's kind of nice. You can start off with a spell that will do some damage and then flip it over to like a heal if you need that or something. Hopefully our spells get a little bit stronger than they are now. They're not too bad right now. Um, but, you know, that's nothing to, to write home about. Then we have these three benefits, and one of the first one's Hunter's Steed. That's the only one we know about. It adds one to run and charge for all Seraphim units. You'll probably recognize this as, a, as it's the Slon's uh, Constellation. 
So right now, when you set up a slot and you roll a dice and you get one of three different buffs. And it looks like this is gonna follow along with those. And so we don't know the other two yet, but I'm guessing it's probably gonna be plus one to cast. Um, hopefully plus one to unbind. Let's add that in there. <laughs> and then the other one is probably gonna be reroll ones to hit. Uh, those are the three constellations that Slon has right now, so it kind of follow in line with that. Um, these are these are pretty nice because that add one to run and charge. You'll want that for the armies that are, that you're going for that fast build. You'll see some of the things that they've shown us so far that we'll get to. Um, you can you can make this army pretty fast, so you can start off with a, a plus three to their movement in uh, turn one, which we had that in a battalion previously, but now it's going to be an ability for one of the sub-factions. But if you add that to that plus one to run and charge, and all of a sudden you're going to be moving pretty quick. Um, that reroll ones, if, if that's if that's one of the other abilities that we get, is going to be pretty good, because I think you can get, what we've seen so far, you can get some of these hits, especially on Soros units, down pretty low. So that'll be kind of nice if you can get get a blob of Soros warriors to two up rerolling ones. Um, I think one of the most powerful things of our allegiance abilities here is that we have bounded endless spells. So we can bind endless spells to ourselves. So we don't know exactly what the mechanic for getting a spell to be bound is, but once it's bound, only we can control it. Um, I don't know if that's going to be every endless spell that we cast is bound to us, or if we can capture other people's ones, like on a, on a certain roll. Or maybe if we roll, you know, like a 10 up, we get to bind it or something. I don't know. We don't know the mechanic for it yet. If it's every endless spell that we cast is bound to us, then that's going to be pretty strong because you can cast out a lot of endless spells and you don't have to worry about them coming back at you. So you might see some endless spell spam lists if that's the case, which, hey, I mean, it'll be fun. Um, a lot of times you don't see the real offensive ones in the endless spell list. You see a lot more board control. So that'd be kind of cool to see like Purple Sun and um, the big the axe that's going through. I can't remember the name. And, uh, you know, cast Geminids and you don't have to worry about it coming back on you. And, you know, you get uh, maybe even the big jaws would have a place in this. <laughs> if you know, none of these are coming back on you. That's pretty cool. So those are the uh, allegiance abilities we know so far. Um, we have an allegiance alignment, is how I, I label this, but it's basically your sub-factions. You've seen that with other other groups, your storm vaults, you know, that kind of thing. And we have two major ones that they've shown. Starborn, which is basically your skinks and your summoning and your magic, and your coalesce, which is your saurus and your monsters. That's where you'll see a lot of those aligned. And it so far, it looks like everything kind of falls into those categories pretty well. And so with the Skinks summoning a magic, you have a lot of, you have a lot of uh, speed, it looks like, a little bit more movement shenanigans. And then Saurus and Monster, uh, or in the Coalesce, you have them um, be a little bit tougher and some, some things like that. The abilities, Starborn. Now, here's another example of where we're really taking the stuff that we already have right now and just kind of shuffling it around. So we get Lords of Space and Time as one of the Starborn abilities. And this is our teleport. So that's kind of our signature thing right now is that we, we get a teleport for free. We don't even have to roll for it anymore. And with Great Member, we had two of them. Now, as it exists right now, we do that in the hero phase. It looks like in Starborn, we're doing that at the end of movement. So we teleport one unit anywhere outside of nine of the enemy. So your, your basic teleport, but it's now at the end of movement. So that brings up a couple of interesting things. You know, before in hero phase, if you had if you had two teleports, you could do a lot of tricky stuff. One of my favorites was teleporting the slon, casting purple sun, and then teleporting back. <laughs> that was that was always my favorite move right there. Now that it's happening at the end of movement, we're not gonna be able to do that. We're not gonna be able to uh, to teleport our slon and cast a spell and teleport back. We're not. I've used him before to teleport him up and. Uh, buff a unit, like let a unit fly and then teleport them back to safety. So we're not going to be able to do that anymore, but it does open up some different things since it happens at the end of movement. If summoning stays the same, which we don't know anything about summoning yet, um, that you would should happen at the end of movement as it does now, then this happens at the end of movement. We'll be able to teleport whatever we summon. And so I kind of like that because there's a lot of times where we teleport something and 
you really wish you could get it into combat. And so if I can tell or if I can summon in uh, some monster, you know, a Stegodon or something, which hopefully they're getting buffed. We'll talk about them in a minute, and then teleport it. Yeah, this opens up some interesting interesting strategies. So I kind of like it. We are going to have to adjust our strategy, our kind of game plan, how we think about things. Because right now I know I move guys up out of the way knowing that I'm going to summon in another set of uh, like screening skinks or something. And so you just have to be wary of that. You know, I'm going to summon something, but I'm going to teleport it instantly when I summon it. Another thing, unfeeling. So that we're getting our bravery of 10 for Starborn. What? We're already bravery 10. Uh, it looks like we're getting a bravery nerf. And so if you take them in Starborn, you get that back up to 10. So... You get it back to where we are now. Uh, we've lost the demon keyword, which you know might help if you're facing somebody who has demon uh, buffs against demons. So we've lost that, but we get bravery back to ten in Starborn. Starborn has two sub factions: uh, Dr Dracothian's Tail and Fangs of Sotek. We'll talk about those here in a second. The other um, allegiance there is Coalesced. That's your Saurus and your monsters. With predatory fighters, you get plus one attacks of all the jaws of all your characters or all your units in Coalesce. And it didn't look like it specified just, um, you know, battle line or anything like that. So I, I, as far as I know, it's going to go for heroes. It'll go for Carnosaurs. It'll hopefully even go for Dread Saurian. Maybe Dread Saurian will see some, uh, some table time if it wasn't played on a gigantic dinner plate. Um, so that's pretty cool. Hopefully everything gets that jaw keyword. I mean, that'd be even cool if... The jaw for like Ripperdactyls. We get plus one attack for Ripperdactyls on their jaws. That'd be cool. Um, also, Scaly Skin is another ability. Subtract one from damage inflicted to a minimum of one. Now, this right here is pretty huge. Now, when you go up against an army that does like a lot of two damage attacks, this is just going to, I mean, you're cutting their power in half. So that's pretty good. It's going to do nothing against things like uh, Plague Monks or, you know, uh, things that have a lot of shots, a lot of attacks, a lot of melee at one. Um, so it's not going to do anything against that, but against your monsters and against your elite infantry and elite cavalry, that'll really help. Um, it also, we, we also saw some other ones. These didn't have names that I saw listed on any of the previews, but it said that we'll ignore negative terrain effects in your half of the table. And so... That's pretty interesting. So negative terrain effects. I don't, I don't really ever play with terrain effects, really. I got enough stuff to worry about when I'm playing this game. We don't really use terrain effects too much, but if you do, you'll be able to ignore that. Um, but it'll also help if, if you know, you got a pesky, um, I enough deep can player that likes to throw his boats right in front of your deployment. Then you'll ignore that. Um, ignore bravery modifiers in your half of the table. So if you're getting screamed at by some feck or something, then that'll help, and that'll also help because our bravery is, you know, what we've seen so far, it's at eight, and so we've lost a little bit of bravery, so that'll help a little bit. Sub-factions are Kotal's Claw, I don't, I don't know how to say that, and Thunder Lizards, so we'll look at those two here in a minute. First up, the Starborn um, sub-factions there, Dracothian's Tail, so it has each, they already said each one of these sub-factions has ability, command trait, artifact, and command abilities. We don't know what they all are, so I've listed the ones that we do know here. Um, the ability for Dracothian's Tail, half the units can be deployed in reserves. End of movement phase, you can set up any of them outside of 9 inches of an enemy and within 18 inches of the Slon. So this is basically the same uh, battalion that was called Dracothian's Tail previously that we have right now. And so it's kind of cool that we've got that as a sub-faction ability. You're basically uh, Stormcast. That's, that's, that's one of their things. And so you set up half your units in reserves. Before in Dracothian's Tail, it was set up, um, it wasn't half your units. It was you could set up one of each War Scroll card. So if you design your list just right, you could set up everything. Here it's half your units. That'll be fine, especially with uh, Teleport and Starborn. You're going to have a lot of movement shenanigans here. Um, you're not going to be able to like teleport your Slon and then dump everybody off and then teleport back. <laughs> which was always kind of cool. You could do that before in Dracothian's Tale. You could, you could basically have your Slon deliver your entire army anywhere you wanted to on the, on, the, on the board. This one, though, happens at the end of movement phase. 
you still have that one teleport. So if you, you know, if you're running your slon up somewhere, then dump off all your units and then you can teleport him out of there if you need to. So there's still a little bit of that. It's not quite as flexible. We'll see if there's some way to kind of kind of run those shenanigans a little bit more with some command abilities or some war scroll stuff once we get everything released. We don't know the command trait yet. We don't know the artifact yet or the command abilities for this one. But this one looks like it's probably going to be a lot of uh, deployed and reserves and then uh, movement stuff. Fangs of Sotek. Here's your ability. What we know for this one in the first round, add three inches to move characteristics of all units. So this is this is pretty cool too because you're going to be a lot faster, but it's only that first battle round. Um, but it's still helpful because <laughs> if you're like me and you play Thunderquake, and your opponent has played Thunderquake before, all they'll do is line up 26 inches away from you and you won't get to shoot anything. So this will help add that three inches of movement. You can move all those monsters up faster. So now your Bastildons are moving eight inches um, and still being able to shoot. Um, also, Ripperdactyls and Pterodons. You'll see what their War Scrolls look like if they're worth it, but um, adding three inches on that first turn and you're going to you're gonna get them into combat, especially if you have that plus one to run and charge. Um, from the from the ability that you can choose for the allegiance, then their charge is going to be better. You're going to be moving those guys pretty fast. You may not even need Shadow Strike if you take Ripperdactyls in Fangs of Sotek. You could move some stuff pretty quick. Um, we'll see what the what the War Scroll looks like for the Warriors and the Knights. If you can still double their movement with their musician instead of just you know a lot of times musicians add like one to run. Uh, their musicians are a little bit different in that they double your movement. So it'll be interesting to see if that works on that three inches as well. You can get some stuff going pretty quick. Um, so those are what we know for the Starborn sub-faction so far. Now we can look at Coalesced. Uh, so we've got Kotal's Claw. Um, the ability for this one is plus one to hit rolls for Source units that make a charge. So we're seeing this is Coalesced is the Source battalion or Source um, faction. And so you're going to want to take your source units and your monsters in this one. So plus one to hit rolls for source units to make a charge. That's, you see that a lot in a lot of other units. But here it's the, the ability for the whole for the whole army. So not, not too bad for source units, I guess. This would be good for you know your Carnosaurs and your, your blobs of warriors and guards and knights. So you're getting that extra plus one to hit on that. And you can, you can stack this. There's a couple other ways to get some pluses to those hits that we've seen so far. And so you can get stuff down pretty low. We haven't seen anything on the Carnosaurs yet. I really want to see something on the Carnosaurs. See how good they are. See how good the jaws are. And uh, what, kind of, what kind of synergies we can get. The command trait for this one is roll a dice each time a general uses a command point. Four up, extra command point. So this one's nice because this is a command trait. Which means that you still have an artifact slot. Which... What do we put on an artifact slot? So we have, you know, Aether Quartz Brooch. So now when we use a command point, a four up gets an extra command point, and then a five up will get an extra command point. So we don't know exactly what all we can use that yet. We don't know what the command ability is, but this might be that command point factory that some armies have where, where they just have a ton of command points and ways to blow them, and, and hopefully that's what this is going to turn into, especially if you take a couple skink priests or a skink star seer we will see here in a minute when we look at units they have they've teased one of their abilities is that they get an extra command point on a roll kind of like a fungal cave shaman or something where in the hero phase you just roll a dice and you get an extra one so if you take a couple of those you take this guy throw aether quartz brooch on it all of a sudden uh you're generating a lot of command points and Luckily, nowadays, there's enough stuff to use them on. And hopefully, we'll see some good command abilities, especially in this one. We don't know what, what's here yet for their artifact or command abilities, but we'll see those when they come up, see if they if they synergize well with that command point um, bonus that you get. Uh, Thunder Lizards. Now, here's one that was making some ripples on the internet today because you saw the Stegadon, um, the Stegadon list featured with this one. So Thunder Lizards, this is where your, your big big nasties are going to be, all your monsters. Your ability, Mighty Beats of War, add two to the wounds characteristics of, and I've cut it off there, basically all your Thunder Lizard monsters. So we don't know what the wounds characteristics are going to be yet, but if it's the same as it is now, you know, Bastildon goes up to 10 wounds from 8. That would be nice. That extra two wounds there is, is pretty precious on a Bastildon. 
especially if they get a little bit of buff and then invincibility, since they used to be a feared tank. They're not so much anymore, so we need to see them buff it a little bit. Um, but every wound on a Bastildon is, is hard to take off, so two extra wounds there would be nice. But, I mean, that would add to your Stegodons, that would add to your Carnosaurs, so that's that's pretty nice. And it's just blanket to all your monsters in this sub-faction. So if you're running a lot of monsters, you're going to want to run this battalion. So far, we don't know what else is coming. Uh, no Command Trader Artifact known yet. The Command Ability, though, this one's pretty cool. So the Trove of the Old Ones Technology. Into the shooting phase, pick up a Sildon within 18, and you get to shoot again. Or if you pick an engine of the god, they get to roll their cosmic engine again. So here, yes. Finally, we get to play in these the silliness of Age of Sigma right now, which is like attack again, shoot again, pile in again, you know, activate again, do all these things again. We get one of those. So that's nice. Uh, we get to shoot again with a Bastildon, which will be pretty sweet. Because, you know, if you run Bastildon a lot, you roll those 2d6 dice for how many shots, and right when you need it, you get two shots. <laughs> and when you don't need it, you get 12. So this will give us another chance with a command point to, to, to let those guys shoot a little bit more. If you can effectively run a command point uh, generator in this list, which won't be as easy because you don't have that same command trait. Of course, we don't know what the command trait is. But using some of the other tricks that we'll talk about in a second, you might be able to get up enough command points in this list to... Let all your Basildons, let's say you have two Basildons and two engines, you're going monster heavy. If you have four command points that you can burn in a turn, you'll get them all to go again. And so we, oh man, mm, I love this because Basildon shooting twice is sweet. They have long range, they can hit hard, especially if you're doing Chaos Demons. Of course, we don't know. This is all depending on what their War Scroll looks like. But also, the engines getting to go twice on that Cosmic Engine will be sweet. The only thing we know on the Cosmic Change so far is that it can heal. But that can also be good, too. If you need an extra heal, um, that can be good. I imagine there will be some kind of damage and hopefully some kind of summons from it. So imagine just spinning a command point and getting a double summons from an engine. Ah, yeah, that's nice. Um, in Thunder Lizards, Stegodons can be ba uh, battle line, and they'll not count as your behemoth slot. So that's pretty cool. So... Here's where you got the... I'm going to skip a few slides for a second. Here we go. I'm going to talk about the... Uh, yes, this one right here. Oh, you can still see my title slide. Let's delete that. Um, so the Stegageddon. <laughs> this was the list they previewed today. And this is with in Thunder Lizards with the Stegadons as your, as your battle line. And they had here uh, one, two, three, four Stegadons... Uh, as your battle line, and then one Stegodon with a Skink Chief, which is kind of cool. So that's your hero version. Two engines and a Bastildon. So it's and they came out to 1970 points. So that's literally your entire list is just big behemoths. I don't know why they had to ruin it with a Bastildon. Just throw in one more Stegodon, <laughs> so you can have all of them be Stegodons. Now that's pretty sweet though. I'm looking forward to playing around with that. Um, it, it is pretty interesting as. Somebody was working out the points, and based on the points we have now, it's pretty close um, to equal what they are there. So I can't imagine if Stegodons aren't going up in points, they're probably not going to go up to like a Stonehorn level or a uh, Terrorgeist level. You know, those are your big nasty behemoth battle lines. So these guys are definitely gonna have some have to have some different tricks to make an all behemoth battle line list worth running but it's gonna be a lot of fun regardless we'll see um so that was the thunder lizards that one's that one's pretty exciting let's look at a couple a couple of the units that they have showed off so far so source warriors they did show that they got extra rend on the clubs or extra rend they got they got rend on the clubs um their basic stat line is just one attack fours threes minus one rend one damage but as we talked about, you can get that to hit down pretty low. We don't know exactly what else they're, how else we're going to be able to buff them yet. Hopefully some battalions will let us do some cool stuff with them. Um, but it's not a bad profile once you can get it down and you can increase their attacks. 
their abilities that's on the war scroll if you have more than 15 or 15 or more you get an extra attack on their club or spears so you can already get one extra attack on their jaws you can get one extra attack on their their weapons from here so basically if based on what the war scroll looks like right now you're starting off with four attacks per unit or per model and in a horde unit like that you can you can get quite a few attacks on that so maybe we can pump these guys up especially if they're hitting on twos and threes and they're getting some rend the we don't know exactly what the jaws are going to be but based on the jaws from the old blood i mean they're okay they don't have to render anything no special abilities i was really hoping the jaws would have kind of like that that um that gulping bite from the ogres maybe not as good but like you know just if you roll a dice a six it's immortal that would that would be sweet uh but it looks like they're just pr pretty normal attacks but you can buff them up with extra attacks here so uh, maybe that's what the point of them is just to get a bunch of them out some of the other units stink star skink star priest i showed us he gets a cosmic herald ability four up it gets an extra command point so there's where you're going to get some extra command points i imagine with that addition i don't know if they're still going to be 80 points that's what they're at now they may go up to 90 or 100 um the skink star seer this one's weird so the star seer has always been more expensive bigger base and to get an extra command point it's a five up on the star seer that's weird but maybe there's some other stuff that makes the star seer worth it star seer hadn't really been worth taking in in a long time so um it would be cool to see him again i do like the model um but i think in this case i'd rather take a star priest Especially because right now the Star Seer is 160 points, maybe, and the and you can get two Star Priests for that. So the Star Seers better have some other stuff up their pockets. Uh, the Troglodon. Now here is where it gets a little exciting. So the Troglodon's turning into a wizard. I, I put down here wizard hero. I don't know for sure if it's going to be a hero or not. It may just get like a wizard keyword, kind of like sequiturs or something, or not sequiturs, evocators. Um. But it, it is going to be a wizard of some sort. It has an ability to add one to casting, dispelling, and unbinding uh, for this model. And you can do board-wide unbinds and dispels. So that's pretty cool. So that right there. No, hold on. Let's, let's finish. So then it has a spell, Comet's Call. Casting value 7. Pick D3 units on the board and D3 mortals each. If the casting sorry, it's got cut off again. If the casting's over 10, you pick D6 models. So... What they've given the Troglodon is they've made him a better spellcaster than the Slon. <laughs> and they've made him, or they've given him, Croak's signature spell. So the Troglodon just got buffed pretty big. That's pretty cool. Because it's gone from like a useless model right now to something that's pretty useful. Um, I can see running, running a Troglodon for sure now. I'm going to have to uh, to build one because I think I can. I think I chopped my last one up and converted it into something else. Um, converted it into Carnosaur. So the Troglodon, uh, it sounds like it's worth taking. We'll see how many points it's got and what else it does. But as a support uh, wizard on a monster mount, it's, it's not too bad. It doesn't look too good. Or it doesn't look too bad. I like it. So let's see what other units that we know of so far. The Stegodon. So the Stegodon got a big preview today. They were sure hyping it up. Um, talking all types of stuff about the Stegodon. And at the very end of the article, they say, now go buy your Stegodon now. And of course, it was, it's was it been sold out for weeks. So um, luckily, I do have five Stegodons because <laughs> um, I'm crazy like that, I guess. So they're, they're, they're going to be fun to run. We'll see. The Stegodon, the Gout of Sunfire. So that's a flamethrower you can put on there. Roll a dice for each model of a target unit within eight. Five up is immortal. So this is their their horde clearing spell previously it was the same like rules you roll dice for each model within eight uh but it was like it was uh, basically just an attack three up three up no rend one damage so it was, it was not good because you couldn't teleport in range to do, use it and if he got into any horde of any substance it was dead so this one's not bad if you can if you can get in close and roll a whole lot of dice those five up mortals are gonna i mean they should you know they should help clear off some some uh plague monks and things like that i'm hoping that there's a bonus to that like hey if you're hitting chaos you know 
then it's a four up or something, you know? <laughs> so that would be cool. So we didn't see anything about the, the crossbow, the, the sky streak bow that's on top of there. Um, it, hopefully it gets a buff too. It needs it. Especially if you're going to be taking these stegodons as, as battle line in your army. If you're, if you're filling an army of eight of these things, they definitely need a stats boost. So we'll see what happens to them. Um, they do have jaws, so they'll get the buffs from the jaws if you take them in there. So there, there should be some synergies with them. If you take them in like Starborn, they have skink keywords, so you'll be able to use some of the skink stuff on them. They'll get faster movement. So there, there, there's some tricks for these guys. It's going to be fun looking at what all they can do. Uh, Stegodon with skink chief. So now we got a Stegodon hero. Sweet. Uh, we've only seen the command ability. Coordinated strike. Combat phase, pick one friendly skink unit, wholly within 24 inches, and add one to attacks. It's not stackable. Um, so this is, I, I, I like the, how long this range is, 24 inches. This means, in my mind, I'm thinking if I'm hitting with some Ripperdactyls, because I love Ripperdactyls, you're adding one to uh, their attacks. Ooh, that would be sweet if they still explode. So if you're deep striking those those uh, those Ripperdactyls, maybe teleport this guy at the end of movement to where he's in range of those Ripperdactyls if you need an extra punch. Or, I mean, anything with that skink keyword. If you're taking a whole bunch of Stegodons, keep this guy around him, and you're going to get extra jaws stacked on top of other jaws. You're going to get extra, you know, foot stomps or whatever it is now, extra horns. So we'll see, we'll see what they're what their stat profile looks like, but this sounds like a pretty good command ability. Um, Engine of the Gods. Okay, so this has been a staple of our army for the last few years, and um, we see that it's it's gotten a, it's changed a little bit. So, Cosmic Engine, it says you now only roll two dice uh, when, when a Slon's not nearby. I assume that goes up to three when a Slon's near. And on... We only see one result so far. Four to eight roll, you heal D3 wounds to all Seraphim, wholly within 12. So that was always the one that, like, you would roll that with your engine, and you'd be like, no, not the heal one. But it was so short range. This is a little bit better because it's bigger range. Um, but with only two dice, you're going to be rolling that a lot. And maybe that's not so bad. You know, if you're taking a whole bunch of monsters, you want to be able to heal. So take two of these guys, or, yeah, take, take an engine and then two Stegodons in front of them. That's kind of like your your core, you know, wing. Do the same thing on another one, so they're healing each other, kind of thing. Um, I am interested to see what the other results are for for that cosmic engine. See what kind of roles you can get, especially if you can modify it with the slon. So uh, we'll see what that is. The th I put down here also. So in the article it said the engine of gods is a magical artillery piece. Magical artillery piece. I mean, to me that makes it sound like there's some kind of Long range shooting. Um, I'm hoping that's in the shooting phase, so it's actually an artillery piece. It might just be the other roll because previously we had that D6 mortals at 25 inches, which is pretty long range, um, pretty nasty, but you know would would net you you know three or four mortals when you rolled on it. So we'll see what it ends up doing. Um, that magical artillery piece was interesting wording, so should be interesting to see what see what happens there. Um. Oh, and then there's our, our Stegodon list. So, so far, that's all we've got. We should have, you know, some, some deeper in-depth looks at this coming up here in the, hopefully this weekend when usually, you know, Man Reads Book and then the New Zealand War Scrolls go live and we can start pouring over and start list building and start figuring out what our Seraphim Army is going to look like for the next next few seasons. So I'm excited. I don't think the Stegodon list is going to be competitive. It's unless they've buffed up those Stegodon profiles somehow. But it's going to be fun. So I am looking forward to all this. Let me know if I missed something. If one of these, if one of these units I got wrong, or if there's some synergies that I've missed, maybe. Let's talk about that. Leave it below in the comments, maybe. And um, yeah. So far, I'm excited. Seraphim Battle Tome is happening. Let's go. All right. See y'all later.